we haven't covered Maginot in a very long time because at some point the developers stopped developing or updating Margin Note 3. More than three years later, we got a very big update, Margin Note 4. And that's what we'll be covering in this video. Fantastic one. Hello. It's Ropsy with Paperless X. The most obvious change that jumps right at you the moment you open Margin Note 4 is the new user interface. It is modern, feels more minimalist, and looks like it will perform much better than Margin Note 3. On the home page, we have a collapsible sidebar housing our different folders in the app. It is now much easier to differentiate between folders you keep locally on your device and those that are in your iCloud. We love that the new sidebar is bigger than the one we had in Margin Note 3. Study sets look great from within the app. We love that the toolbars are anchored to the edges of the screen. They look much better than the floating ones, don't you think? Again, keeping the minimalist feel and you don't feel like too much is going on, which is something you always tend to feel with, with Margin Note in general. But they've managed to minimize that significantly in Margin Note 4. Even the collapsible sidebar looks great and clean. We love the new user interface in Margin Note 4 and we appreciate that they've brought out this masterpiece. We even get five different reading modes now before we had four. We still have the white and the beige and the black, which make more sense. Gray and green, not so much. Margin Note 3 didn't have the gray option. Do you think it's a necessary addition? If you really like the floating toolbars, you can still have that in the app. Options are always great in a productivity app. We love that they still look better than they did in Margin Note 3, so the developers have really put a lot of effort into polishing the user interface. We were hoping that we wouldn't have to dig into folders in Margin Note 4, but it seems we're still stuck with that system, even though we now have an efficient sidebar that can house all the folders in the app. The app's organization hasn't improved. You still have to wrap your head around the idea of creating new folders and organizing your notes into categories. Just like we had in Margin Note 3. It's still exactly the same and it's very disappointing. It's not a very exciting start. Because we're hoping after waiting such a long time, the developers would find a way to simplify how we create folders in the app, especially because now they actually have a better way of presenting them. Before, we couldn't create standalone notebooks that were not linked to PDFs, and that was very limiting, especially when you want to take notes that are not necessarily from a textbook. But in Margin Note form, we can do that. And that means the app now doubles as a note-taking app. Say what? You still get the section where your PDFs are supposed to go, which we were hoping we wouldn't see at all. That would have been a perfect setup, but you have the option to collapse this section out of the way and never have to see it. So maybe this is okay. We hope that in the future, standalone notebooks can really stand alone without any attachment. This consistency, however, the same thing that we dislike, can also mean that it's very easy for you to add PDFs if you ever want to do that. So we have mixed feelings about this. Do you want to see the option to have PDFs or do you not want to see it at all for your standalone notebooks? Do tell. Your notebook template can be dotted, squared, or lined. Line spacing varies depending on how zoomed in you are on the page. It is very wide at 100%. It's not the most ideal way to adjust line spacing, but it works in Margin Note 4 because it doesn't affect your pen thickness, which makes your handwriting consistent. What do you guys think? Margin Note uses an infinite canvas for your notebook, so you don't get any page options. Though it's expected for a PDF reader, 
the infinite canvas is annoying because you can easily lose your notes like I did. There is an easy fix for it, of course, you can go back, but it would probably be better if we can track our canvas in some way. Module Note 4 has a new feature that allows you to add sophisticated comments to your PDF. A small, subtle icon appears on the right side of the document each time you add collapsible notes. The developers have called this extended notes, but collapsible is probably a better term to use. And module Note developers have a tendency of coming up with strange names for their features, probably a translation issue. Collapsible notes seems to make more sense, judging by how they behave. What's confusing though is that the app also marks your selection with a comments icon. It could just be my iPad because I'm currently running the iPad OS developer beta. Isn't the comment icon a little bit difficult to see? Or is it just a bug? Notes and comments in most PDF readers are usually text-based. We're used to seeing that. What's exciting about the collapsible notes in Margin Note is that you can handwrite or add text boxes to them. For a human who prefers handwriting over typing, I sure am happy to see the new way of commenting on PDFs. Essentially, at its core, it's a commenting feature with new amazing capabilities. Of course, I'm going to be excited about that. You can even add photos to your extended notes. You keep extending the section to write as much as you need. And this is probably where the developers are getting the idea of extended notes. A better setup than increasing the size of the notes window would probably be to scroll without increasing its size. Because after some time, you run out of space on your screen. Chances are, you also want to keep the PDF in focus while you're taking notes, so scrolling away from it is also not that ideal. Collapsible notes on the PDF itself are a whole different ball game. I've been looking for a Bible study setup for years, and this might just do it. We can easily see and edit our flashcards without leaving our study notes in margin note. This makes navigation in the app a lot easier and we love how simple it is to organize our notes. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to even answer our questions within our study notes because it would just feel like everything is coming together in one place. In Margin Note 3, we had our flashcards and writing area side by side. It made sense, especially when you look at the current setup we have now in Margin Note 4. The writing area closes part of the question, making the whole experience unpleasant. That is worse because you can't scroll the question, or at least resize it, or even resize the writing area. So, the setup we had in Margin Note 3 was a lot better. Encrypted vaults are great to see in Margin Note 4. When some developers are trying to get their hands on our data, we're happy to see a developer who is trying to protect and keep it private. It seems to work as a backup solution, which makes sense. 5 gig is not a lot though, we can't help but feel a subscription brewing. PDFs are huge documents. Add that with annotations, they become humongous. The good thing is that there are plenty of other options to export to or back up your notes in Margin Note 4. While on backing up, shouldn't we have auto backup by now? Research is much easier to access. The setup is still the same, but it's much easier to get to and that just makes it a lot easier to use in the app. So we really like that small improvement. It really does make a huge difference in your workflow. We've always been able to move our documents to the left, but now we can also move them to the bottom of the screen. 
Not sure how that's useful, perhaps to create some extra space when writing, but you have the option to completely remove the document, so this feels a bit redundant. Let us know if this is a feature you'll be using in Marginal 4. Mind map branch styles are a welcome update in Marginal 4. We hope to have more options for them in the future because at the moment they look very basic. With the new folding or collapsing feature, Marginote 4 lets you collapse parts of your PDFs that you don't want to see. This doesn't delete those pages, it simply hides them temporarily and you can easily bring them back. Quite a useful feature, we feel like it will help with the loading speeds for your PDFs on your documents in the app. Just tuck away everything you don't need and just focus on what you do need for that time. Makes sense. We're always happy to see layers in a PDF reader. Sadly though, they're useless if we can't hide them. So until we have that in margin note, the layers feature isn't that useful. Despite very few documents in the app, margin note 4 is a bit slow. That is quite annoying because I haven't even started using the app and it's quite empty at this point, so it really shouldn't be taking time to load anything, but it is. We're also unable to manage our documents in the app. Each time we go to the manage option, the app crashes. And we've been able to replicate this bug every single time. So this is quite a persistent bug. Undo is removing way too much from your canvas. Instead of deleting the last letter you've just written, the app is deleting the whole phrase or sentence even. The developers updated the app while we were covering these updates. We hope that they fix some of the issues we've already mentioned. Margin Note 4 was especially buggy from the very first day that we launched it. It wasn't as stable as its previous version, but we hope the developers can iron out all the minor issues. A few features are missing in Margin Note 4, which we had in Margin Note 3. We could collaborate before, but now we can't. It's not good when upgrades come with missing features that we had in the previous version of the app. Those who are using these features will definitely not want to switch to Margin Note 4 just yet. But if you stopped using Margin Note 3 years back like I did, Margin Note 4 is a great update and one you should definitely check out. We will do a course for Margin Note 4 as soon as we finish the liquid text one that we're currently working on. And if you're interested in our courses, make sure you check out Paperless Humans. What features did you like most and what do you miss? Do tell. We hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, Fantastic Human, for watching. See you in the next video.